Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to an update video to the topic how to cut the glass tubes or to work with the glass tubes because in the previous video we were getting enormous amount of feedback um, about how to work with those glass tubes like cutting and uh, smoothing the edges. One important part was that in the end I was smoothing the edges with sandpaper and somebody said that we should try to heat up the edge with a torch and therefore get this kind of round and smooth finishing. That's what we will try today and we quickly have to go to a DIY store and get one of those torches. Okay, I think uh, this kind of torch should be fine. It says up to 2400 degrees Celsius. I think this should be sufficient. I think this kit is also 64, uh, 65 euro. I don't want to invest like 300 now for this massive torch on the side. So I think we should go for this one. A lot of people also asked in the comments to just use one of those normal tube cutters. Personally, I thought there would be too much pressure on the tube using one of those, especially the big ones. I also ordered one of the bigger ones on Amazon. So I already have that one at home, but um, I'm also grabbing the smaller one and we will just test if this works or not. I just spotted this cutter right here. I also ordered one of those online, but it didn't make it in time. That's why I'm grabbing another one right here. It's, I think, to cut tiles for, I don't know, your kitchen or whatever. Um, two wheels on here, which are meant to, uh, to be used for cutting. They don't move, which I think will make it quite weird, but we will just also grab this one and give it a try. Back at my place and we will get to test those tools in a minute. First of all, I want to thank you for leaving down so many comments in the previous video where we were talking about cutting those glass tubes. As I said before, it's pretty much my first time cutting those glass tubes. I have zero experience with that and I wasn't really sure what to do with them and, and how to cut them. That's why we built our own tool, which worked kind of nicely. Um, some people left comments down below that I should try to use some oil on the cutting wheel while cutting and also don't do too many rotations, maybe only a single rotation, not too much pressure, just have, yeah, like scratching the surface and then break off the tube. Some people were also leaving the comment that I should try um, like um, quick temperature changes, similar to what you can do, for example, turning a bottle into a glass, which is something you can see in plenty of YouTube tutorials. This is something that should not work with bor borosilicate glass because this is very resistant to temperature changes because it's used in chemistry and all of that. That's why I don't think it would work with borosilicate glass. I'm not sure if we're going to try it in this video, but um, just some response to the comments down below. Really thankful for that. Also, a lot of people requested to test a normal tube cutter, which you would use for cutting some, let's say, copper tubes for your heating at home. I bought this one on Amazon. That's the one I told you earlier about. It's pretty good quality, I have to say. You can see it's a very fine thread, so you need a lot of rotations to move this uh, thing forward or backwards. We have the wheel for cutting right here and we have some additional steel wheels here where the tube will be um, pushed against and should protect the tube from getting any kind of scratches. I was first worried that I would maybe apply too much pressure with, with a tool like this against the tube and the tube would maybe break, but we will just try and see um, if it works. Then we have also this tool. It's basically the same thing, just five times cheaper and also five times smaller. Same principle, we can put the tube in between here, move this thing with a screw. Then we have the wheel in here for cutting and also again something to push the tube against. Should probably also work if the other tool works. We will just see how well this performs because it's also not that stable. Not sure if we will get those helix cuts again. Before we test all the new tools, we will quickly update our DIY glass cutter because I ordered some new glass cutting wheels. The one on the left is the old one, which we used in the last video. It's a little bit smaller. It's not that much high quality. It doesn't really feel that sharp anymore. It's the one that was sitting in front here. And now I ordered a new one from a chemical shop like a chemical supplier shop, which I think they always use it for cutting borosilicate glass. It's a little bit bigger. It's also nicer from the quality. It feels really, really sharp. It's also a little bit thicker. So we have to update the glass cutter to fit it in between here.
everything went as planned as usual, obviously not. The new cutting wheel has an inner diameter of 3 mm or the hole, while the original one, the small one, had 2 mm. So the original screw was also an M2 screw with an M2 thumb nut. So we had to change that obviously. Uh, used the drill bit in the acrylic, which didn't work out as planned because the wall was just way too thin. First went from 2 mm diameter to 2.5 because I thought going to 3 would immediately break it off, which is exactly what happened with uh, 3 mm. You can see half of the acrylic here is missing, but it's still fine. We fixed it with an M3 screw with the nut on the back. Also added some glue on here and also on here. You can see the wheel is spinning fine. So we can now check with the new wheel and some oil if this works better for cutting. Quick voice over for a couple of seconds. The tool is ready to go. We have the oil right here, so I will apply a small drop of oil onto the tube. I think this amount should be sufficient for cutting. Now gently apply pressure and do one single rotation. The only problem with the oil is that I cannot really see the cut. It was quite easy to break the tube, even though we only did one rotation of cutting, but the cut does not look nice. You can see a lot of glass particles fell off from the cut itself. This side kind of looks fine, but only until this part. This part really does not look nice, There's so many parts missing on the edge. It's not a clean cut. We also have plenty of small pieces laying around on the table which we have to collect now first before we continue. I think the next try we will do is again with a DIY cutter but just cut a lot deeper. Again, not really satisfying. It's, it's quite even, but the edges look absolutely horrible, especially on this side. But we will just use the torch and see if we can smooth the edges with it and therefore kind of turn it into a nice result. We will see. I have to say I'm pretty satisfied with the result. It looks really smooth and kind of reminds me of the pre-bent tube from Alpha Cool, which we checked in the previous video. Really smooth edge and from the front looks also quite nice. I think we will just let this cool down and then we will try to put it into the fitting and see how it works. After not even five minutes, it's already so cool that I can touch it with my bare hands. It's maybe room temperature. I'm really, really happy with the result right here. Let's try to put this into one of those EK fittings. Now you also know what kind of fittings I'm going to use in this build. The new EK ones, just in black, looks quite beautiful. Yeah, extremely smooth. Putting the additional ring over the tube. Yeah, this is pretty much perfect. So I'm pretty sure that we found the right method for chamfering or burying the edges of the glass tube. But let's still try the other tools first to see if we can still improve our cutting somehow. We will start with the Rigid 35S, the big glass tube cutter or the big tube cutter. It's not meant to be a glass tube cutter, but the big uh, tube cutter I ordered on Amazon. 
My big concern is that this wheel is not meant to be a glass cutting wheel and it's not as sharp as the other wheels which we used. But we will still be careful and see what happens. Oh yeah, there really is some pressure on this tube. Yeah, this is pretty much what I thought. It's extremely difficult to kind of adjust the pressure you're putting onto the tube. It didn't really feel like high pressure. I had like half a rotation maybe maybe even a quarter of the rotation after it felt like you're applying pressure and even then the, the wheel didn't really start cutting but you can see the result yeah this tool is not made for glass tube cutting it's it's too stiff for it and the wheel is not meant to cut glass i think if you replace the wheel it could maybe work and if there was some kind of spring mechanism in here maybe it would be better but don't use those kind of tools. I'm pretty sure this is not going to work. I don't really have much hope for the small tube cutter because it's exactly the same principle as the big one. I think it's yeah, even worse because the thread is not as fine and uh, yeah, we will see. I bought it anyway, so we will give it a try. We still have this tube left. Yeah, for this small one, there's absolutely no hope. Even with quite a lot of pressure, doesn't do anything to the tube because this cutting wheel is just not made for cutting glass. It's not sharp enough and yeah, there's zero hope for this one. The last tool which we're going to use is this tile cutter. A lot of people also put this in the comment down below. Not sure if this is like a misconception, but those wheels are stiff. They don't rotate. Maybe there are different tools like this where the wheels can actually rotate, I'm not sure. But it's the only one I could just quickly pick up in a store locally. I think it's just meant to cut tiles in pieces, small tiles. But we will put the tube in between, rotate it, see if there's anything that we can do with this tool. With a lot of force, you can actually cut quite deep into this glass tube with only 180 degree rotation. But you can see it's again this helix type cut, which I don't see why it would be any kind of benefit over the previous glass cutter. Let's just try and break it and see how it looks like. Cutting result better than I expected. Even though the cut was quite deep, it was extremely hard to break the tube. It's still far away from a perfect cut, but I think we will not get further than this. I think this is quite nice, but it's also not, quite, not much better than the original DIY glass cutter, which we built and uh, optimized with the better wheel. I think that's still the way to go, because if we then still use the torch, I think the edges will be fine. Result will be nice. The conclusion from my side is that we will still stick with the DIY glass cutter. From my experience, it still worked the best among the worst. It's still not perfect, but I think we're getting there. I might update the arm, might make it a little bit longer so I can apply a little bit more force or have more control over the force. Also, maybe have a little bit um, better tolerances on the wheel because it's still moving a little bit. But I think this is still the best option we have right now for the cutting. It's still much easier to use and kind of dose the force you're applying to the glass tube because with this tool, for example, yeah, it's just, it's just not made for that. And for working on the edges, I think the torch is still by far the best option. Extremely nice idea. So thank you very much for the feedback on the torch idea. That was great because that's just one minute you apply on the tube. You just Put it on there and looks perfect afterwards extremely smooth just slides into the fitting so that's perfect the other options yeah forget about them the 
conventional tube cutters they're not made for glass so that's really not nice thank you very much for all the comments in the previous video it was extremely nice and helpful from you guys that we could just read through other ideas if you still have any other idea that we could try feel free to leave them down in the comments below about this temperature change method a lot of people commented like cooling and heating up the tube with like a string something people use quite often for turning glass bottles into glasses for example to drink that's something that should not work on borosilicate glass because it's extremely resistant to temperature changes but if there's still any other method let us know in the comments thanks for tuning in and see you next time bye